What's going on guys? It is Murder Inc. here, back with another Raid Shadow Legends video. Today we're going to be going over an epic champion, part of this Pixneal fusion, Gerard the Stone. Overall, definitely a very interesting name to put on this guy. We'll go over his model in just a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the overview and you're going to decide whether or not this guy's going to be worth it to actually keep or to use if you do plan on fusing this legendary champion i highly recommend waiting for either myself or someone else to come up with a comprehensive guide on this legendary before you jump to any conclusions about what picks Neil is actually worth to you and what you can do for your account all right so here we have him this banner lord's epic attack based champion gerard the stone honestly this is a rather his cloak is cool i will give him that but this is a rather basic champion model um the sword they could have done so much better here let's go over his skills and let's try to get a feel for what this champion actually has to offer you and your account so we have an a1 here ringing blow this kind of reminds me of someone like a killian where it attacks one enemy has a 15 percent chance once fully booked this will go to a 25 percent chance placing that stun debuff for one turn it is just one turn but that is kind of enough to actually do your job to making sure whatever target you're focusing doesn't get a shot has a 40 percent chance up to a 50 percent chance of stunning a target if their turn meter is greater than 75 percent not a huge quality of life thing this is just an a1 so that is something to keep in mind the first thing that came to mind when i thought about this is this would be a nightmare if i'm facing a team with someone that has garage the stone and someone like a valkyrie a skull crusher any type of counterattack champion if i'm trying to aoe them down with a skull crown and this guy just keeps coming back whacking me with that a1 with that chance to stun me it can definitely be an absolute nuisance so that is something to keep in mind now let's move on to the a2 where we're going to find out where this champion really shines and what his overall purpose is actually going to be so show of valor being the a2 three turn cooldown once fully booked this is a 30 percent increased crit rate 30 percent increased crit damage buff in this champion for two turns then attacks the enemy so right off the bat we have cold heart vibes here on this on top of that cc from the a1 where he only needs 70 percent crit rate to actually do a ton of damage why that's important is what comes next will ignore 25 percent of the target's defense baseline will ignore 50 percent of the target's defense instead if that target is under increased defense buff this is going to be big and i will tell you why how many times have you gone into the arena and you haven't properly speed tuned your team an enemy cp cuts you off someone else cuts you off like a black knight they put up that defense up you don't have a debuff stripper or they were smart enough to tune it to cut you off where it went after your debuff stripper and you're just looking at a whole lot of trouble or even more likely you go second overall here and your champions cut them off to where you're not facing a team with defense up this is a very very hard buff probably the second hardest buff to actually kill a champion through the hardest would be strengthen and unfortunately this skill has no interactions with a strengthen buff on the opponent however based on what we've seen so far this guy is going to be the one shot champion he is an epic but the fact that you don't need 100 crit rate you're getting 30 percent extra crit damage which is quite large if you really think about how much 30 percent crit damage is taking a lot of stress off how you can actually build your champion you can focus on speed you can focus on attack and all the other stats kind of come together because of this buff alone now you're getting this 50 percent ignore if they have defense up 25 percent if they don't so we're going to do some testing see how hard this guy hits in the arena and overall that's going to be his main purpose now his passive is actually quite interesting now when i first read this guy's kit i was rather confused he has the cca1 he has that a2 that screams i'm gonna one shot all of you but he also has his passive here immune to fear true fear freeze provoke sleep and stun debuffs now that's really interesting for the fact that all three of these are characteristics of separate champions and it's all kind of like mixed in one like Pyrim said take this ability take that ability and I guess it's cool but it's going to be very very hard especially with an epic champion with the base stats that he does have to really capitalize on all three of these things 
in sequence of each other. So before we get too into that, let's go over his aura here. Another Doom Tower aura increases ally resist in the Doom Tower battles by 50, which is you don't really need a lot of resistance, but maybe you can find a strategy with that. It's weird that they gave it to the champion that is literally immune to all of the CC. I found that kind of funny and ironic, but that's just me. So. What I want to do now is let's go over his base stats at level 60, fully ascended. 12.5 thousand HP, barely any HP there. 1,387 attack, not crazy high, can definitely use some work. 1,000 defense, which is actually quite respectable, but the fact that his HP is so low is rather worrisome. 101 speed, definitely on the upper echelon of the speed spectrum. 15% crit rate, 60% crit damage, also 3% under the normal that legendaries have and even some epics have as far as the crit damage threshold and then resistance being baseline 30 accuracy zero so as you can see here i did give him savage gear and i did give him cruel gear because i decided to go the route of this is a one-shot champion that is his purpose he cannot be cc'd so he could be a little bit slower but i don't recommend it because as we just saw from the base hp he is rather squishy as far as total stats for this champion we have 23,000 health and once again, I know I've mentioned it already, that's literally no health at all. 4,700 attack, 2.2 thousand defense, 151 speed, 77 crit rate because we are getting that 30% crit rate from his A2, 265 crit damage, also getting 30% crit damage, making that 295, absolutely insane, 149 resistance and 177 accuracy. So this just leaves one thing left to do. Let's go into the arena with no defense down, with two turn meter boosters, and let's go and one shot some people. What do you guys say? All right, so here we are in the arena. Our first victim is going to be the team with Tormin, Sile, Yannicka, and our defense up applier, Black Knight. Really cool team. Really glad I found this before I hit refresh. And as we can see here, we're going to be using Arbiter as the leader, Sifi, and I'm just going to call him the stone. I think it's really funny that they put the stone after. I don't know. It just, it, it gets me. Okay, so defense aura once again, increased defense from Black Knight. I'm kind of going to manual just to make sure they actually get to apply some of their things. Okay, so we're going to go first, obviously, because the person whose account I'm actually on now has very high speed and that's probably worth showing after because you will be quite shocked at how fast this guy's champions are and let's just burn the a1 we're not really trying to stun we have no accuracy let's go for it on Tormund. maybe he's a problem okay we didn't get it all we did was we broke this shield did a little bit of damage to him that's not what we're highlighting here let's put yannicka to sleep here a1 Tormund. who cares they're gonna go there's that defense up buff now let's put Torment to sleep so he doesn't CC any. Well, he can't CC. He cannot CC our friend here, which is highlight. Let's boost the turn meter. Make sure we get a turn. Torment's awake. Okay. Show of Valor. Before we use this, let's put this to one time speed. We are going to target their Reviver to make sure that there is no hope here. They do have defense up, so we're going to see the full effect of Show of Valor. Let's give it a go. 112,000 right through that shield. Not really sure how big the shield was. Also, not quite sure if Helm Smasher proc there. I'm going to lean to no just to be optimistic, but who knows? Okay, we'll take this off of one time speed. And you know what? Let's put this on auto and just watch this team. Hopefully, nothing really bad happens here. And of course, the game's going to momentarily freeze there. We got our counterattack off. And I believe Yannicka is going to one shot. We can see what the A1 does. Okay, so the A1, that was definitely Helm Smasher proc. Once again, no defense down. Who cares? Who needs it? This guy's here to one shot, and that's all he cares about. Torment's asleep. This is fine. We'll go ahead and hit Black Knight. I really do want Black Knight. I shouldn't have slept him there. That was a mistake. Uh, we'll increase the turn meter, and we have an A1 available. Let's go for Torment. He's going to counterattack. Can't be frozen. Can't be CC'd. Interesting passive. I'm probably going to say that a few more times, but... It's just strange to see on a one-shot champion like this. I don't want to boost a turn meter because I want Black Knight to use his defense up ability that he's not going to use anyways. Okay, he's got the unkillable up. Let's go ahead and not sleep him. Okay, show of valor without defense up and it does not ignore unkillable. So we'll use this on the Torment here. Freeze, reduces damage taken. This guy does not care at all. 
So we're gonna let this cycle through and this is what the stone has up his sleeve. Now, he's going to be rather hard to find a spot for, if I'm being honest with you, in some type of progression. If you need a one-shot specialist, and I recommend everyone for their arena teams having a one-shot specialist, this is your guy. He's part of this fusion. It's probably going to be relatively easy to get in the fusion. So, yes, you may have an AoE nuker, but highly recommend for any team that has a really annoying duchess. This guy's gonna one shot a duchess, no problem. As far as using this champion somewhere like dungeons and faction wars, maybe faction wars will have a spot. Maybe zoom tower if you're really stuck on a wave and there's just one champion that's an absolute nuisance to you in one of the enemy waves. Bring this guy in here, he'll one shot them, no problem with that A2. But honestly, he's going to be an arena specialist. He's going to be kind of that fifth man role where. If you see a team like this exact team here, Seeker, Valkyrie, Kandrafin, and Arbiter. I'm not really sure why Arbiter isn't the leader, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna fight this team, and should we be safe? I'm leaning towards no. You know what, let's throw in a second Arbiter here, and before I forget, I told you I would show you. Let's take a look at this Seafy here. In case you guys don't know this, this Seafy is actually the fastest Seafy in the world as of right now. 390 speed. Mind blown. I'm not sure what the speed cap is. I believe it is 420 something. I could be wrong. Check my math on that. Yell at me in the comments. But this is an extremely fast Seafy. And once again, Coltrane, thanks so much for letting me use your account in showing the stone off to all these people. Now, double arbiter, Seafy, the stone against this meta arena team. Not meta really for how they have this situated. This is a bit questionable, but let's see what we can do against this team here. And let's try to proc that defense up from the seeker passive as soon as possible. So obviously we're going first. No one's stopping us there. Turn meter boost. Let's just do it again because why not? And it's funny because we're actually ahead of Valkyrie's passive. Yes, we saw resisted, but we boosted so many times. Our turn meter is actually overfilling faster than Arbiter or faster than the enemy Valkyrie is. And I think that's quite interesting. So. They're gonna get a turn now, and let's see if we can actually proc and crit here. Perfect. Defense up on all of our champions. Now, okay, we died, not a big deal. We're gonna revive here. We have three of them for good reason. Gonna revive with a full turn meter. Let's just boost just in case. Arbiter did still cut us off. We'll double boost just to make sure. Okay, defense up is currently on Arbiter and Valkyrie. We don't want Valkyrie to go, but Arbiter, I believe she already burned her revive. So let's hit this Valkyrie in one time speed and see what we can do. 225,000 damage without defense down. Lots of possibilities here, like I said. Rather niche as far as where you'd use it, but that's why I'm kind of emphasizing he's going to be the fifth man in the sense where you can plug and play this guy if you have a team with a seeker leader with someone like a duchess he's probably going to one shot anyone in rather mediocre gear just because of that huge benefit he does in fact get from that 30 percent increased critical strike and that 30 percent increased critical damage so now we're just going to be extremely annoying with three turn meter boosters and revivers and our stone here and it looks like the turn meter boosters are actually doing the majority of the work. And eventually we will get revived here. And that's going to be the main story of what this champion is going to be used for. I really wish I could have said he's going to be useful somewhere else. Maybe someone can shock me in the comments and say, hey, maybe you can use this guy here. Maybe you can use him there. But overall, I'm really getting the feeling that this is his only use and outside of somewhere like faction wars or somewhere you're really struggling with he's not going to be that helpful to you overall so i'm taking a gamble here okay we're gonna clear this no problem i just didn't want this to be a 10 minute run arbiter's dead now we're just going to go through and one shot actually Let's see if i can stop this in time to get a nice a2 off here perfect with defense up on this seeker, how hard are we gonna hit you? 118,000 without 
a Helm Smasher proc based on what we saw before. So yeah, this guy, one shot specialist, highly recommend if you do need him for that role. Anything else, very, very questionable. All right, guys, that is my video for today. Let me know what you think about this epic. He definitely isn't the most impressive epic of the four, as we will see as I keep releasing these videos, giving you the champion spotlights and guides on the epics of this fusion here. But I want to know your feedback. Will you actually have a use for this guy in the arena? Do you already have someone else who does this job? Not as good, but good enough to where you're happy with your account. Is he going to be used to instantly fuse this legendary? Are you guys even going for this legendary? There's been lots of speculations on how bad the champion is. Honestly, nobody knows. If you don't have her, I really, I cannot stress this enough. Don't care about anyone's opinion. I don't care if they're a game developer saying this champion is terrible. I don't care if they're a random player saying it's terrible. No one's opinion matters until they have the character in front of them, they have their own gear on it. You're looking at the synergies and that's how you're making your decision. As always guys, if you enjoyed this content, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, and I will see you all in the next video.